lots of apples. It's good for you. Okay, what's everything? Welcome to Sleeping Giant Provincial Park. I'm floating. Look at you float. But it's still a beautiful view. In July of 2022, we did a seven park, three week, 3,000 kilometer camping road trip with another couple. And we thought it'd be a great idea to share with you what went into the planning and preparation for a trip like this. Now we're gonna be breaking this down into four parts. We're gonna start off with the planning, the preparation, and the execution, and then we're gonna finish it all off with lessons learned from this trip. The first thing we had to do was to figure out a route. What is the destination? Sleeping Giant Provincial Park. How much time do we have? Three weeks. How long do we want to stay at each park? Minimum three nights. How far is our destination from home? 1,425 kilometers. What is our upper limit for distance traveled in a day? 600 kilometers. We want to get there in three drives, which means two parks on the way. What parks do we want to go to that we can do in three drives? Home to Grundy Lake, 364 kilometers. Grundy Lake to Lake Superior, 514 kilometers. Lake Superior to Sleeping Giant, 551 kilometers. We have time for four parks on the way home. What parks do we want to stay at? We wanted to try out Puxa National Park, but they don't take reservations and we had a rigid schedule to keep. We couldn't risk not getting in there and having nowhere to camp for three nights in the middle of our trip. So we picked Nays instead, then Pancake Bay, Chutes and Kilbear. All along the route, and all the distance within our maximum drive time. Sleeping Giant to Nays, 259 kilometers. Nays to Pancake Bay, 353 kilometers. Pancake Bay to Chutes, 285 kilometers. Chutes to Kill Bear, 253 kilometers. Kill Bear to Home, 312 kilometers. The next thing we have to deal with are reservations. And this is tricky because we're not just trying to get reservations for us, we're trying to get it for us and another couple. On this entire trip that we're doing, all these parks, Sue and John, are going to be with us. And if possible, we prefer to get the two sites fairly close together. We thought that as long as one of us got a good site, then that's great, because we could all spend most of the time at that one good site. Booking five months in advance, we got on the Ontario Parks Reservation website about three days before our earliest booking time for each park we wanted. So we'll use this as an example. We'll look at Kilbear Provincial Park. Tuesday, June 27th to Friday, June 30th. It is currently January 25th. I can book as of June 25th, but I want to look a few days early. Do the search. And there is some availability at Harold Point, Beaver Dams, and Kilcorsey. Let's have a look at Kilcorsey. And you can see 118, 113, 85, and 54 are the only ones available for that date. Now, we can't book those now because you can only book five months out in advance. So on the 27th, a couple days from now, it looks like these would be available then. But here's the thing. Some of them might be booked up today. Some might be booked up tomorrow. So you need to go into the calendar view. In the calendar view for June 27th, you can go down and see these sites are available. Site 54, 85, and 113. Never mind this at the top here, the uh, website is messing up with the dates at the top as you scroll down. So what you need to do is see what is available before this date. So you go to previous. And now you can see, so site 54, 113 and 118 become available on the 27th. And on the 26th, site 85 becomes available. So if we want site 85, we don't want to wait until the 27th to book it because it'll likely be gone. Somebody will book it the day before. So tomorrow, when this becomes available to book, if we do book it and get it, great, we've got the site. We just remember in one month's time, we cancel that one day. It's a 10% penalty. That's about $5. In most cases, we tried for whatever was available. Cheryl and I were on separate computers, and Sue and John were also on separate computers. We would start attempting to reserve then and try each of the three mornings until we got two sites. We'd settle for any site, even non-electric if necessary, just to get a reservation for the dates we wanted. When we made reservations for Lake Superior, 
we couldn't each get into the same campground. We got into Rabbit Blanket, and Sue and John got into Agua Bay. Turns out these campgrounds are about 37 kilometers apart. In a video, when we informed our viewers of our plans at Lake Superior, many of our viewers commented that they believed that Agua Bay was by far the better of the two campgrounds. One viewer went so far as to send us a PowerPoint presentation explaining why Agua Bay is better than Rabbit Blanket. We decided to try to change our reservation. The park was booked solid. We used Camp Nab, and within two weeks we were notified of an opening. We quickly got on the Ontario Park Reservation website and changed our reservation. We ended up getting a beautiful waterfront site. Pro tip, don't cancel a site and rebook for the same park. You'll pay the cancellation fee and the booking fee. Simply change a reservation and you'll only have to pay a $10 change in reservation fee. We used the same process to try to get into Nays, but we were completely shut out. We couldn't get into Nays. I clicked on the similar tab to see if there's anything nearby that was available and I saw that Rainbow Falls had availability. Since we hadn't been to Rainbow Falls either, we decided we may as well reserve there, and it's still along the route. For the last park, Kill Bear, we knew it would be very difficult because we're going into the Civic Holiday Weekend in August. Kill Bear was fully booked, and so was everything else near there. As it was our last park, we didn't worry too much because we could always just drive straight home from Chutes for about a 550 kilometer drive. We put a Camp Nab search in for Kill Bear, and it actually took a couple of months before we got a hit. It was an electric site for one night and we pounced on it. We kept the Camp Nab search going and eventually a three night electric site opened up and we changed our reservation to that one. So my plan was to be self-sufficient for three weeks without having to buy anything. In Cheryl fashion, I overpacked way too much. Our trailer has quite a bit of storage, so it was fully packed. I also had two Rubbermaid bins full of food. My plan for the first week was to go with all perishable items. For the next two weeks, I was planning to go with all pantry items. I didn't know on this long trip if we were gonna be near any stores or if the stores would have what we were looking for or the cost was gonna to be too expensive. Guess what? We ended up coming back with two Rubbermaid bins full of food. I didn't need all that after all. We did find a store in Wawa. I was able to get a few fresh items. So I did make up a basic menu plan of what we were gonna have each breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but of course that changed because we were on the road quite a bit. Most of the time, I would just have snack-type foods for lunches as we were driving along, so I'd just reach into the bag and pull something out to eat. Um, breakfast was fairly simple. Ben loves a cereal. We had oatmeal. Um, dinners were a little bit more creative using what we had. We did end up eating out at a few places for lunch. I think the thing is to be quite flexible with your meal plans and nothing too labor intensive. So don't overpack like I did. Basically, just go with the flow. Now for the gear that we're taking. We knew we were gonna take our usual gear like paddle boards, bikes, kayaks, that sort of thing. But on a long trip like this, and in some areas where you're not really around too much civilization, we knew that we had to pack some extra things just to be safe. We have a spare tire on the trailer, but we decided to bring a second spare tire. We brought two five gallon jerry cans full of gas in case we missed out on a gas station. We thought about bringing a generator, but decided not to. Mostly because it's kind of big and heavy, takes up a lot of space. And we're only going to each park for three nights, except for Sleeping Giant, which is four. If the park did lose some power, it wasn't a big deal. Uh, we weren't gonna be there for that long. Also, uh, our original battery that we got with the trailer was five years old, so it's time to replace it. In replacing it, I replaced it with two batteries. So I have two 12 volt lead acid deep cycle marine batteries so that we'd have twice the battery life if we had to go without power. Cheryl always says to be prepared and she likes to always pack for emergencies. And I like a happy wife, so this is what we do. If you use your phone for navigation, be aware, you're gonna lose cell signal for a large portion of your drive up around Lake Superior. If you use Google Maps, either on your phone or through Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, you can download offline maps of your route. That way, if you lose cell service, your navigation will continue with the downloaded maps. I'll show you quickly how to do that. On your phone, open up Google Maps. Type in a location such as Lake Superior Provincial Park. Press where it says the name of the park and the star rating. That will take you to more information about the park. Press on the three dots on the top right, and at the bottom of that drop-down, press Download Offline Map. 
It then shows a rectangle on the screen, which is the area of the map to be downloaded. It also shows how much memory will be used on your phone to download that map. You can zoom out from there to get a bigger area. As you can see, there is a maximum size you can download. Also, the bigger the area, the more memory it will take up on your phone. Pick an area to download and press download. While it downloads, it brings you back to the last page. Just press on the three dots again and press download offline map again and select a different area of your route and download that map. And keep doing that until you've downloaded all the maps to cover your area of concern. In our case, it was from about Sault Ste. Marie to Sleeping Giant. Another thing I strongly suggest, you don't have to, but it's a good idea, is to have yourself a map or a atlas because your GPS is going to fail you at some time if you haven't had it happen already. This has uh, saved us on a few occasions and it fits nicely between your seat and the console so it doesn't take up any room. It's always good to have a backup plan. Then it was time to go. We headed out on Saturday, July the 9th. It was a 365 kilometer drive to Grundy Lake Provincial Park where we stayed at Site 611. We took a lot of back roads to get to Highway 400 near Aurelia. We'll do anything to avoid driving the 401 into Toronto and the 400 out of Toronto. Then we took Highway 69 to the park. We had nice weather for the drive for all three days. The mosquitoes were a little bothersome on site, but not too bad. When we went into the bush for hikes or biking, the deer flies were crazy. We had bug jackets with us, so we put them on and all was good. Sue and John had a waterfront site a few sites away. We could put our kayaks in next to their site. We had a great time hiking, biking, paddle boarding, and kayaking. Okay. That's one park down and six to go. Bye bye Grundy Lake, hello Agawa Bay. It's been a blast. On July 12th, we left Grundy Lake for Lake Superior Provincial Park. It was a 517 kilometer drive. We stayed in the Agua Bay campground at Site A-103. We checked out a couple of places just north of Grundy Lake. We went to the Hungry Bear Restaurant and the French River Trading Post, as well as the French River Visitor Center. We also stopped in at the Big Nickel in Sudbury. This is a pretty big drive day, so if you don't want to spend the time now, you can check out these places on the way back, since we're taking the same route back. In Sudbury, we take Highway 17, and that's the road we'll be traveling on for the next couple of weeks. There are no gas stations or stores in Lake Superior Provincial Park, so you have to be self-sufficient. Make sure you gas up before getting into the park. If you stop at the Voyager Lodge or the Camper's Grocery, which are both just before Pancake Bay Provincial Park, you can fill up with gas. The next place to get gas is on the other side of Lake Superior Provincial Park, which is in Wawa, and that's 150 kilometers away. The Voyager's Lodge is a rite of passage when you're coming up to Lake Superior. You have to stop here, you have to check it out, because they are famous for their apple fritters. These are some serious business. We had an amazing waterfront site. Sue and John were a couple of sites back with a view of the water, but not as nice as what we had. We all spent most of the time at our site for the evening campfires. We had nice weather. It was usually pretty cool in the mornings and evenings, but the sun warmed things up during the day. Bugs weren't an issue for us at this park, so that was a nice change. This park had some of the best hiking and views of any park we've ever been to. It's a huge park. We went to Old Woman Bay, and that was 65 kilometers from our campsite, yet we were still within the park. This is Old Woman Bay, and right over here is the Old Woman. Hey! Okay, that right there is the Old Woman. On July 15th, we left Lake Superior Provincial Park for Sleeping Giant, 551 kilometers away. We stayed at Site 112. This was our biggest drive day and the most isolated. We would look for places to fill up whenever the gas tank got around half. Very high tech. <laughs> One button, no credit card, no nothing. That's it, very high tech. There are a few small towns and retail areas along the highway to get gas and food. We meant to check out the Big Goose and Wawa, but missed it when we drove past. No problem. We would just check it out on the way back and we would have more time anyways. This was our destination park. We spent four days here and had two waterfront sites side by side on Marie Louise Lake. It was awesome. The highlight of the park was to hike to the top of the giant. We've talked about it in a couple of videos. It's a tough 22 kilometer hike, but well worth it. Well, Cheryl, we made it to the top of the giant. We did. It took us two hours and 50, two hours and five zero minutes. Uh, we weren't 
you sure weren't blazing a trail. No. Uh, much younger people were doing it in a much quicker time than we were. We were getting passed along yes. the way. But Ooh. we did it. You did it. I'm so proud of you. It's been my goal for a while to get up here. Yeah. On July 19th, we left Sleeping Giant for Rainbow Falls, where we stayed on site W14. It was only a 181 kilometer drive. It was a rainy and misty day. With such a short drive, we decided we may as well check out Weemit Canyon Provincial Park, which is on the way and only 81 kilometers from Sleeping Giant. It was well worth the stop. Our first couple of days at Rainbow Falls were cloudy and rainy. Our last full day there was beautiful though. We had side-by-side -side pull through sites. The sites were pretty tight and not very level, but we made do. We hiked the Rainbow Falls Trail that takes you to a lookout, but all we could see was fog. The last morning I went for a bike ride and a hike by myself on the Back 40 Trail to another lookout, and this one was much better. We really enjoyed White Sand Lake for paddling around. It was a nice size and had nice views. On July 22nd, we left Rainbow Falls for Pancake Bay. It was a beautiful day for the 432 kilometer drive. We stayed on site 347. We found the big goose in Wawa. It was much easier to see driving east. We went into Wawa and did some grocery shopping for perishables and Ben hit the beer store. Again, it was a beautiful drive and not a lot of civilization. We drove back through Lake Superior Provincial Park to Pancake Bay. Our site was amazing. So this is site 347, but I gotta show you the best part of site 347. Follow me. That's me. Welcome to our backyard. We spoke to people there that said it's one of their favorite sites and they're always trying to get it. We just happen to be lucky. The beach at Pancake Bay is amazing and the water is shallow and sheltered in a bay so the water is noticeably warmer than the rest of Lake Superior. We spent a lot of time at the beach. On July 25th, we headed out for the 284 kilometer drive to Chutes, where we stayed on site number two. On the way, we stopped at Chippewa Falls. This is Chippewa Falls. It's the halfway point on the Trans-Canada Highway. Trans-Canada Highway runs from St. John's, Newfoundland to Victoria, British Columbia. It's a nice short hike in for some beautiful falls. We were in a different campground than our friends, so we split up our time between the two very similar sites. The waterfalls and the hike along the rapids to the two bridges was very scenic. We really enjoyed floating down the river. Cheryl used the clay along the bank of the river for a bit of a spa day. On Thursday, July 28th, we headed to Kill Bear on a 253 kilometer drive. It was pouring rain when we left Chutes, but it all cleared up by the time we got to Kill Bear. We finally said goodbye to Highway 17 and got back onto Highway 69 heading south. Sue and John couldn't get a site at Kill Bear. They had to go home in a couple days earlier than us anyway, so they managed to get one night at Awenda. We stayed on Site 88. The weather was nice, but pretty windy each day, which kind of hampered our kayaking aspirations. But Ben got some paddle boarding in one morning. We were pretty tired from our journey so far, so Kill Bear was more of an R&R &R park for us this time. Kill Bear never disappoints. It's beautiful and we had a wonderful time there. Sunday, July 31st, we left Kill Bear for home, a 312 kilometer drive. Goodbye, Kill Bear. It's been a blast. We had fun here. We enjoyed meeting so many people. And now we end our big Seven Park Lake Superior tour. And what a way to end it at Kill Bear. Let's head home because we got to look after our dog that just got sprayed by a skunk. Yep, the joys. So these are the lessons that we learned from doing this trip. Plan everything in advance. Be prepared for emergencies. You don't have to pack to be self-sufficient for the whole trip. There are stores along the way. Very few stores, but there are. Don't try to drive too far in any one day. Set a limit. That's right. Do your research. Know what you want to see and do at each park when you're there. You can do that by Googling things to do in that area or to check out YouTube videos of what other people have done. Personally, I would recommend checking out Camping with the Coles. I've heard good things about them. Mm -hmm. Don't think that you have to do everything that's on your to-do list. Sometimes you just need to relax and chill out. We hope this helped you for planning your next big camping road trip adventure. If you're thinking about doing a trip like this, go for it. It was amazing and memorable. We'll have memories for years to come. And we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Happy camping.